Next, we want to bring up our next speaker is the director of Casa Freehold in New Jersey. Now, Casa Freehold works with new immigrants arriving to the U.S. Casa Freehold is part of, and the person you're about to hear from, in the past was on the executive board of the National Day Laborers Organizing Network, which fights for civil, labor, and human rights of day laborers. And with the Trump administration's all-out assault on immigrants and threats to sanctuary cities, she is on the front lines. So please join me in, in welcoming to the stage Rita Dentino of Casa Freehold. Thank you, and I'm really honored to be invited here to be with you tonight, both you who are here and you who are across the country. Um, I always feel, um, well, myself, I am the most at home at maybe six o'clock in the morning out on the street with the day laborers. Um, sometimes when I, people see me there on a Sunday morning, here we are in a church, um, and they see me outdoors along the side of the street, um, some church people will assume that I am there as a representative of a church, which I am actually not. And uh, I say, I am also one of the workers, just the same as the people I'm with. We're just all equal here. So, um, and Sunday for us is pretty much the same as every other day. We don't have things called weekends and things like that. Um, we don't go out on Friday night knowing that we could sleep in on Saturday morning. That whole world does not exist with us or with any day labor. But right now, um, I would like to back up and say a piece of news that I heard just today. I had heard it, but I hadn't read it as fully, really, until actually I got here. Um, and, and it brings out, you know, some of what you were just talking about. And a program was announced today, I believe, and this program is called VOICE. <laughs> Strange name, actually. And VOICE is an acronym that stands for Victims of Immigration Crime Engagement. So V-I-C-E, V-O-I-C-E, like that. Um, and that's supposed to be a national hotline for victims of crimes, you know, that have been done against them by immigrants and refugees. Um, it's, it's part, really, of this whole thing that's been especially uh, strong under Trump, but it's really been going on for quite a while, um, of criminalizing immigrants and criminalizing refugees. Um, the mistake they made this time, and they made a really big mistake to me when I read more deeply into it, is they published a list of all the people in Homeland Security who are undocumented immigrants. And who they published in that list were little tiny babies. They didn't take any age difference. So a newborn baby could be the criminal who committed the crime and made you a victim. <laughs> and I looked at that and I said, what? You know, how far have they gone this time? You know, that they could have done that. You know, I have been doing this work for the last 14 years and, and I work with unaccompanied minors, children who cross the border by themselves and hopefully make their way to some protected place to stay eventually. Um, and in all that time, till today, their identity was kept private. Anybody under 18, their identity was kept private. We, you know, even those people who are trying to help them, you know, that could be a blockade a little bit, but that's okay because we understood we were protecting children. But as of today, the identity of babies and children 
has all been put out into the light. And, and that's how, how little this Trump administration cares about, about these people. You know, and it also shows though, how much in the front lines of this whole thing immigrants are. And especially, well, day laborers, I think most of all, I think day laborers, and I also think domestic workers. Day laborers are visible. We see them out on the corner waiting for work. Domestic workers are more invisible. They're in homes. They're caring for that which we love the most, our families, our homes. Um, and they're often, you know, under the worst of conditions. Um, so and we, well, we need to remember them too. And sometimes in our situation as advocates, we have to go and rescue them. Um, should I move this down just a little? Or? I don't know. <laughs> it looks like it's like keep, up over my nose. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But um, anyway, I just that um, hit me with as such a slap. And we talk about these 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 crossing times, and, and you described it very very you know um, sadly but beautifully. You know these these crossing times when we come to a realization, and, and this today when they come out with this voice program was for me a crossing time. Um, but really, what Trump inherited, Trump inherited a ready-made, horrible, broken immigration system. So he didn't really have to create something. He created, I mean, he inherited a prison industrial complex, which many of you here are familiar with and have been fighting for some time and know that we have um, only 5% of the world's population here and 25% in prisons and immigrants are part of those in that prison industrial complex and they are people of color. And that's, that's a point too that's so important in this, um, in this whole Trump regime um, thing. It's, is people of color because you know I, I've also been been reading more and more that with his order of hierarchies and in here comes also this this kind of comparison of um, of what is the purest race or whatever you want to call it um, that picking out those chosen people and and we've seen you know the um, the white male is the highest of the hierarchy. The woman is not so high. <laughs> um, and many, there's many people talking now about the handmaiden's tale. And certainly um, people of color, and when it comes to the immigrant hierarchy, many are saying that it's really going to be the immigrants are color who are going to take the hardest hit, and they always have, um, but now they will more than others. So those day laborers that I stand on the corner with so early in the morning in my very favorite place, um, they're out there, and they're so vulnerable now. Um, you know, sometimes I think to myself, if somebody took me up and they plopped me up and they stuck me on a corner in China and I didn't speak the language and I didn't know the culture and I had a full expectation that some stranger was going to come along, pick me up, take me to work and pay me and treat me respectfully and at the end of the day they were going to bring me back. I think, I must be crazy to have such an expectation, but that's really the expectation that day laborers live with every single day. So the people who see day laborers, they look maybe comfortable hanging out. <laughs> They're really not so comfortable hanging out, you know, and, and they have to worry about ice showing up, um, and they have to worry how those bosses, whoever the boss happens to be who's going to come that day, how they're going to treat them. Um, and now under this Trump regime, uh, sadly Trump has empowered the worst of the worst in our country. And so 
we have um, instances of not long ago in the middle of the snow and the wind and the cold, I received a call from workers, 12 workers had gone out and just been left in the middle of nowhere. They had no idea where they were. Um, and, and this very hard man, he just left them there. And, and, we, and, and then we had to find them and go and get them back. And, and we have more of these kind of things. And luckily, no harm had come to them. And luckily, too, another, a good Samaritan came in the meantime and brought them into a warm place. Um, but we're going to have more of these kind of things. And as far as, you know, I echo what my friend was saying, that we have to act daily, you know. I hear people say, oh, the next election. No, it's not the next election. <laughs> it might not be any election. You know, I worked at the election, actually, and I woke up and I had maybe like five minutes or so to get upset, and then it was time to get back to work. But, and it's a work daily of every single person. They, you know, people have for too long been in their comfort zones, whatever they are. We all like to be around the cup people who have similar beliefs to us. We're marching down the same path. But I think we have to make a pledge to ourselves now, every single day, to step out of that normal comfort zone and begin to do that on an individual level. And then, yes, join with people, like-minded people like we're with right now, hopefully, but also, go outside on the street, and somebody who we would never talk with or never be with, do that every single day, you know? And we have to make our world bigger because um, otherwise it will be made very small for us. <laughs> and I like that.